this is a couple days old, this story, and it's been a long time coming. It's been a very, very long time coming. But San Antonio Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond is now officially the head coach of a basketball team. However, she will not be coaching in the NBA just yet. For whatever reason, no NBA team felt that she was, uh, whether they felt she wasn't ready, whether they felt she wasn't qualified, they have not taken a swing on Becky Hammond for whatever reason, even though she's proven herself to be quite a good fucking coach with the San Antonio Spurs. However, she's making, I don't want to say she's making the leap, but she's going back to her WNBA roots, and she signed with the Las Vegas Aces to be their next head coach. Okay, let's watch the video. We're going to watch the video, actually. There's so many... I think I cannot emphasize the importance of this opportunity um, that I have and that I think this is more advantageous for growth. And there, there's something to being a head coach. You know, I, I sat in a lot of um, head coaching interviews and, you know, I don't think there's any one, two things that people always said, you know, you've only been in San Antonio and you've never been a head coach. Well, I can tell you right now, Mark Davis met me, Nikki met me and said, that's a head coach right now. That's a head coach right now. We're going after her. She's the person. And so that's why they got me. Uh Here's the thing with that opening statement from Becky Hammond. Meanwhile, she is 100% worthy of getting this job. But for coaches or for whomever, whomever is conducting the interviews of this team to be like, to say, oh, you've only been in San, in San Antonio as a negative is very bizarre to me because if you are a young head coach, there really is no other better place to be than with the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, maybe the Golden State Warriors, I'd also argue that potentially the Miami Heat as well, but San Antonio under studying under Greg Popovich, learning how someone who is arguably the greatest coach of all time goes through preparation in every aspect of his job. And then beyond that, just the schematic advantage of learning under Greg Popovich, because the San Antonio Spurs and through all throughout the tenure that Becky Hammond has been there, they still play basketball the traditional way, which I feel is an excellent foundation for any head coach, because you understand that part of the coin, but then also having to coach against teams in the Western Conference, like Portland, like um, Golden State, you learn how to game plan against the teams that are more modernized. And that's invaluable because the greatest issue that so many head coaches run into, at least nowadays in the NBA, is that their game plans are very lackluster. And a lot of the times they are, I feel, a little too reliant on their star players if they're lucky enough to go to a team that has multiple star players. Like, I mean, I'm watching Steve Nash coach and I'm still blown away that this team is not, or this team as in the Brooklyn Nets is not more dominant because look at the weapons that you have. I mean, I know Kyrie hasn't played yet. I know Joe Harris isn't playing right now, but this team is on a three game losing streak where they've lost to the Clippers who they beat and they lost because they collapsed. And they also just got fucking demolished by the Memphis Grizzlies who were beating them by like 30 at one point. How do you have Kevin Durant and James Harden and you're just letting them or you're not trying to do what they do best? Like they're settling for threes a lot of the time. There's no fluidity to the offense. There's none of that. Working for someone like Greg Popovich, you understand how a basketball team is supposed to function in a half court setting, which is the hardest area for any coach to excel at. And then, of course, defensively as well but uh, let's get back to this um and i couldn't be prouder to come back to the w um it's where i'm from it's we're not even having this conversation if it wasn't for the WNBA. so i couldn't be happier to come back and give back and invest in these girls not only as basketball players but as young women and as leaders not only in the community but in the world so i am stoked there's so many uh great women coaches out there um, that should be leading their own teams and uh, given those opportunities. I mean, we have never had these press conferences when it came to a man leading a woman's team. We just haven't. We always have them. And there's all these conversations about either women leading a men's team, which really hasn't happened yet. So once you start getting into these um, these leagues and you start seeing, you know, Sandy Brundella has won championships in, in the W. Another benefit, of course, of Becky Hammond, going back to the WNBA, is that 
Say what you will about the WNBA. A lot of basketball fans really don't appreciate it for what it is. Um, it's a very it's used as a punching bag for a lot of sports fans, a lot of immature sports fans, but ultimately in the realm of like basketball comedy, if that's even a thing, it's very low hanging fruit. And ultimately it's never it's always just about the aesthetic of what the WNBA is, where it's seen as an inferior league to the NBA. When in actuality, it's equally as talented. Unfortunately, I don't feel it's as marketable for some strange reason. I think I do think that's because like there is this weird sex. There's this in, almost like inherent sexism in a lot of younger sports fans where there are certain sports that are female dominant, things like soccer, things like volleyball. And then there are other sports that are inherently male dominant, you know, basketball, football, the four major sports. But a lot of those sports, I'm talking about basketball, of course, and then soccer, like the leagues are the same in regards to talent. It's just, again, the aesthetics of the conversation. Like the WNBA is seen as an inferior product because it's not as quote unquote entertaining as the NBA. It, there aren't, you know, these hyper athletic players who have a 48 inch vertical leap. There is there isn't any of that in the WNBA. However, what the WNBA has that the NBA doesn't have is a much more fundamental approach to basketball. And you see this, there are a lot of college teams, a lot of men's college teams that play basketball like WNBA teams, which is the quote unquote right way. I don't want really want to say it's the right way, but it's the more fundamental way. You actually get in the half court and you run sets. You practice making these simple passes. You're not just going to play one-on-one -on -one the entire game. And it's another great avenue for Becky Hammond to take because she gets to absorb even more of that after she had already spent however many years with Greg Popovich. But Becky Hammond, again, makes another, another good point when she's talking about how, you know, male head coaches aren't perceived the same. Oh, I don't know. She didn't say they weren't perceived the same, but like she was talking about certain press conferences and how women, of course, female head coaches are unfortunately held to a different standard than male head coaches. And one of the reasons, one of like the um, the societal reasons or the cultural reasons, whatever, what have you, that Becky Hammond was kept out of a head coaching slot in the NBA is that people were saying how you can't have a female head coach in a room full of all male athletes. Like it's simply won't work the dynamics of those two genders simply won't work and that doesn't really make any sense to me because in college you have male head coaches for female basketball teams look at Gino Oriyama who's the most dominant head coach that women's collegiate basketball has ever seen right up there with of course legendary Pat Summit like why does that work why does a 60 some odd year old man I don't know how old he is but he's probably in his 60s how does he operate in a locker room full of 18, 19, 20 year old girls. Is it again, the basketball thing? Because if that's the case, why can't Becky Hammond be the head coach of a basketball team? If she knows what she's talking about in regards to basketball, you could put her in any NBA locker room and she'd, you know, theoretically she'd thrive. Or if we go back to the WNB where there are male head coaches, how come that works? Um, an adult male in charge of an all female team. Why does that work? Why does it being an all-male basketball team and a female head coach make it different. Is there even, I don't feel that there's a legitimate, there's a legitimate reasoning for that. I think that I'll, I really think it ultimately comes down to teams don't want a female head coach. And I think they're not afraid of her performance because her performance is proven. She's a proven head coach. She's a proven basketball player. I think it's all optical. And the way that a lot of NBA teams conduct themselves, well, I can't even say that because there are teams that make a lot of suspect decision making, but they are aware of the optics. They are aware of the PR that they're going to get, but that like, I don't, I don't think that's valid for not hiring her much. Like, I don't think it's valid for you to look at Becky Hammond and be like, yeah, well, you've only been in San Antonio. Like, don't you think that there's a reason that she's only been in San Antonio that Greg Popovich has entrusted her as a valued member of of his coaching staff? The NBA, um, you know, uh, Cheryl Reeves. I mean, these are quality coaches, period. Take off any other label. They are great coaches, period. 
And quite frankly, I've been watching the WNBA for a long time and stealing all their plays for a while. So <laughs> they have great basketball minds and, um, you know, they, they are 100% invested in what they do and they are the best at what they do and they should be paid as such and they should be rewarded with these positions as such. Nothing but facts. Straight up. Straight up. When it gets down to it, if we're talking X's and O's, talking offensive schemes, defensive schemes, you can go to any basketball team in America, whether it's college, whether it's professional, whether it's amateur, even if it's a fucking high school team, and you can give them a playbook. And of course, you know, the higher up, the more professional you are, the more in-depth the plays are going to be. But the basics of running an M- of running a basketball team, the on-court basics are all the same. The Golden State Warriors can run the same playbook as the Las Vegas Aces, as the New York Liberty. It's just different personnel. Of course, you're going to have to adapt the playbook to the kind of personnel that your team has, but that's with any that's with any basketball team. I'm just, I'm very excited um for Becky Hammond. I think that I don't know how long the contract is for. I mean, we'll finish the season with the Spurs, then she'll inherit an Aces team that posted the WNBA second best record last season and lost in the playoff semifinals. She replaces Bill Lambeer, who left his position after coaching the season's four Aces. I don't know how long the contract is for. I would imagine it'll be for a couple of years at least, but I think if for whatever reason Becky Hammond goes to the WNBA and shows that she can be the head coach of a basketball team and she establishes herself as a legitimately good head coach, I think it'll be a no-brainer for a team, for you know, probably a young team in the NBA to finally allow her to transition into that role. I think a young team would be best for her in her NBA future just because less pressure and then she'll be able to also like adapt to whatever the NBA looks like in three or four years. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Congratulations to Becky Hammond. This is uh it's it's monumental for her. I mean it's she's not in the NBA. She's not an NBA head coach quite yet, but I don't think I don't think we're that far away from it. Now 